God has behaved in this manner of not saving previously. There were whole generations of people that never heard the gospel and never had opportunity to become saved. There was the 2300 days in which God virtually wasn't saving anyone. And the Bible speaks and warns of a time when God would not save. In Zephaniah 2, verse 1, it says, Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired, before the decree bring forth, before the day passes the chaff, before the fierce anger of Jehovah come upon you, before the day of Jehovah's anger come upon you, seek ye Jehovah, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of Jehovah's anger. So the cry was to seek the Lord before the day of judgment come. And the implication is that once the time of judgment does arrive, then it's no longer time to seek Him. That opportunity will be complete. Let's also go to 2 Corinthians 6. I'll read the first couple of verses. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. A time accepted. An acceptable time period known as the day of the Lord. Also called the year of salvation the acceptable year of the Lord in the book of Isaiah. But it's an acceptable time period. That is, God has laid out a certain season in which men may seek Him, and following that, it will come to a close. Now, let's just look at this day of salvation. And people read this, and it says now in the verse, so they say, well, now, you see, it's referring to this time. But we have to read that statement in the light of everything the Bible says. I'm sure we could find verses where God uses the word now in the Bible, and it doesn't mean it still applies today. But the day of salvation, if we go to John 11, verse 9, it says there, Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. So there's a day of salvation. How many hours are in the day? Twelve. Twelve hours in the day. Now go over to John 9, verse 4. says, I must work the works of Him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. So Jesus is saying, I must work the works of Him that sent me while, which is during. During the day, while it is day, because the night comes and no man can work. What work did Jesus have to do? What work did the Father send Him to do? Look at John 6, verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on Him whom He has sent. So, the work of the Lord Jesus Christ which he must work while it's day, is the work of salvation. This is the work of God that ye believe. And we know we were talking about that earlier. We're born not of our own will, but of God. Of the will of God. That's the work of God that can only be carried out, Christ says, during the time of day, the day of salvation. The day that is 12 hours in duration. Now, if we turn to Matthew 20, we find that parable that's very instructional, very helpful. It's the parable of a householder who has a vineyard. And he sends workers out into the vineyard. Now, the householder would be God. The vineyard would be bringing in fruit. So it has to do with God's salvation program. And in verse 2 of Matthew 20, it says, And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. If the day is 12 hours long, when does the day begin? 6 a.m. 6 a.m. And the third hour would be 9 a.m. 
So, verse 3, He went out about the third hour, 9 a.m., and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. Sixth hour is noon. Ninth hour, 3 p.m. And verse 6, and about the eleventh hour. What time is that? 5 p.m. And just like today, it's a very similar work day that we have today. People get off work at 5, others work till 6. Now in this case, it's a 12-hour day. Are there not 12 hours in the day? You start at 6, you finish at 12. And in this parable of the vineyard, we find a 12-hour work day. Isn't that amazing? It fits perfectly with what Jesus said. It's the day of salvation. The householder is God, getting laborers together to work. And so everything's going fine, the day's progressing. But now comes the 11th hour in verse 6, 5 p.m. The day is almost over. And about the 11th hour he went out and found others standing idle, and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man has hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, even, that would be night. That's the night. When even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came... They supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. They were hired at the eleventh hour. They wrought or worked one hour. Eleven to twelve. Five p.m. to six p.m. One hour. And that didn't fit the pattern. Because he was going out at intervals of three hours. The third hour, the sixth, the ninth. And then finally he breaks the pattern at the eleventh hour. And he hires these others, idle, standing around all day, to go work in the vineyard. And they work one hour. Now, you tell me, what does the Bible identify with one hour? The Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation. Revelation 18, verse 10. In one hour is thy judgment come. One hour. And there's other verses too. One hour identifies with the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation which we had thought that there's a 23 year Great Tribulation period. May 21, 1988 to May 21, 2011. Then comes the end. We thought it's the last stage of God's program. We thought, this is it. Just that final hour. And it does so happen to complete the day. It completes the work day. The one hour, the last hour, the 11th to the 12th hour completes the work in the vineyard. The 12 hour day has ended. And Jesus said, I must work the works of Him that sent me, which is the work of salvation, while it is day. That last hour completed the great tribulation, completed the work day, and what comes immediately after the tribulation? The sun is darkened. The moon does not give its light. And what comes in the night? No man can work. Jesus said, I must work while it's day, for the night cometh. No man can work. It's 6 p.m., and now He has ended His work. You see, the problem is that individuals have who say that God is still saving. It's not just the light matter of saying, well, we're here. We're here, therefore God is saving. Because the true believers are here in the world. Well, true believers were in the church also for the first several years when God wasn't saving in the church. So the presence of true believers means nothing regarding salvation. You can have true believers in the church, and if God's Spirit left the church... Nobody is going to be saved in that church due to something, you know, some spiritual aroma or something coming off the true believers so that others can sense it and become saved. It doesn't work that way. 
It takes God's will to save, and it must be in a place that He is determined to save. And so the presence of true believers in the world at this time does not mean God's saving at all. Nobody can prove that. That's the nice thing to say, and I'm sure a lot of people like to hear that, but it's not true. The presence of true believers means that old saying, zilch. <laughs> it means nothing, absolutely nothing, as far as God saving. If a presence of a true believer could save, then all of our children would be saved in our homes. But we can't even save our own children. It means nothing. And so what people have to do is they have to show from the Bible where we're at in relationship to the Great Tribulation. Because the Great Tribulation is the last hour of work. And then the night comes. It's the twelfth hour where no man can work. The Great Tribulation was 23 years. It ended on May 21, 2011. The night has come. And the Bible does confirm that when the night comes, no salvation. Christ is that man. He must work the works while it's day. The night cometh when no man can work. He's that man, and he's not performing that work of salvation any longer. And so, in order to have a legitimate understanding of what God is doing in these days, you must show from the Bible, from all the information we have from the biblical calendar of history, that the Great Tribulation was not 23 years. We were wrong about that. You must show it actually is longer. 70 years, however long you want to say it is, you must prove it from the Bible. Then we can say salvation is continuing. Because you're holding a contradictory position. If you're saying the church age is over and God's judging the churches, you're saying the great tribulation is now. All right. But is it unended, unlimited? It just goes on and on and on and on. When does the great tribulation conclude? See, that is what God's people would listen for. Do a serious Bible study showing how all things fit together with the biblical calendar of history and all these Bible passages and how the Great Tribulation period is actually longer than we thought and how it fits perfectly on biblical feast days in the future if you do extend it. Then you might catch the ear of a child of God because then you're at least putting forth honest effort. But you can't just deny something. You can't just say, oh no, oh no, God's still saving. Well, that has no weight, no power with a child of God at all.